Hello, world. It's us. It's Audio Mullet. Except for, we don't know what happened to Mike. He's gone again. Uh, but it's me and Doug. My, my, my name's Ethan, and this is Audio Mullet. Yay, Audio <laughs> Mullet. This is Audio Mullet. This is the time when uh, where we celebrate the things of old. Things like out of style, uh, spats are out of style, and using uh, mousse, 80s mousse in your hair. Mm-hmm. And then our favorite haircut, the mullet, which went away, but probably should still be here. Kind of like anything of your dad's values or great old things that are out of style, but should still be here like a mullet. It'll probably be back thanks to shows like Stranger Things making 80s the, the 80s cool. I'm surprised that a lot of kids aren't wearing mullets again. Yeah. Like they, maybe they should bring, you know, they they brought back things cool in the 80s, but they didn't bring back racism on Stranger Things. <laughs> well, how are you doing t- <laughs> this I just, weekend, I, Doug? I, I broke you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're on a really weird delay right now, so it's breaking my brain trying to have this conversation. This portion of the conversation has been omitted due to extreme latency and delay issues due to Ethan's unwillingness to force his son to stop hogging all the bandwidth by playing Fortnite, which would have really upset his wife. We continue at the end of Doug's lecture about how Ethan needs to go in there and rip the TV off the wall because he has testicles and is the man of the house. I'm in my office because I work because I'm a dad and I work for a living, just like dads of yore who'd get on a boat mm-hmm. and they'd be gone from the house for three months. They would be off to sea. Usually sometimes they wouldn't even come back. And that's where the songs like uh, Mandy, you're a fine girl because he's a man of the sea. <laughs> sometimes you're just gone and then you're you come back and the. You might not even recognize your kids. Maybe another kid appears just from nowhere. I don't know where kids come from. But maybe you you left with three kids. Then you come back and there's a fourth kid. And your wife says, you had a son. Oh, good. I hope. I'm glad he didn't die in birth like the other ten. (laughs) Are you you tempting like a light Norm MacDonald type of (laughs) old yarn? (laughs) If if you mean by Norm Macdonald telling the truth, then yeah. <laughs> I think part of it is that things are tense right now. The uh, the, the quarantine is getting to us. And so I don't know why Saturdays are hard. It's, it's, well, you know, we have all four kids here. Uh, two of the kids are at their dads half the time because of the their stepkids. Um, you know, and they're all here. They can't leave. It feels like a day we should be leaving. It's a Saturday. They usually go out and do something. And it's like, this is like the, how many are like six weeks in or whatever to doing nothing on Saturdays. And, uh, they're all starting to, it's like the new hobby is to just get furious at each other. All for a fake volunteer white it flu is. that kills no one. I'm ready one. to completely be on and board if, with this being complete BS and I'm, it's, it's infuriating. I, but I called it months yeah. ago. I called it when no, we first I'm, started. Yeah. I mean, I. <laughs> Those, it's been my instinct masks, all along, but now it's so obvious. And it, now it's so obvious that I was right, that this whole thing was fake. It's purely political. <laughs> it, the, the farther to the left you are, the more likely you are to say, stay home, that wear is a weird. mask. This, the mask that is the American burqa, the fake hijab mask of self-righteousness going, I, we're making masks for the poor. <laughs> all the Hollywood people are like suddenly... They're, they're all sewing masks for the hoi polloi, for the bourgeois, the scumbags. And Hollywood's a bunch of hemophiliacs. They're just terrified of getting bumped or bruised. They're like, oh, we can't expose ourselves to this public plague. We're more important than all of you. So all of you, we're going to sew you masks, but you stay home. We'll gut the middle class and gut the lower class, destroy all businesses, and we'll all be fine. But you guys pay this price. Stay at home, you. Do you? I'm Gal Gadot. Imagine there's no America. <laughs> it does make like it dawned on me as this is all happening because I'm always thinking, you know, what is going through the head of somebody who really, really wants socialism? Like they really, really want the government to be in complete power. And and I think I'd always thought, you know, they just want really high taxes and lots of government programs. But this has made me realize I think that for a lot, there's certain people that. They want it much farther than that. Like they actually want the government. They like the idea that the government 
will be printing money, providing all the things that we need, and we just get the money, and we just do what we want. And in their mind, somehow that's how things can work. Like, it seems so idiotic, yeah, they can't have but farmers and there's got to be people who think they that. can't have farmers and people who manufacture stuff. Yeah, who, being who would they free. be? Like, who would <laughs> they, <laughs> they'd be working for the government, I guess, but there'd still be tons of people working against their will. Yeah. And we're, we're old people stacked up like rats on a prison planet called New York. <laughs> But we have to dictate what everyone in the middle of America, where they have like naturally like a mile and a half acreage all by themselves already sit social safe distancing. But because New York, a bunch of uh, really abused people living in tiny, tiny, expensive cells, it is. they have to dictate what all of you do. Yeah. No, and it's yeah, New York. It's, yeah, it's so bizarre. For the whole country to be dictated by basically New York and L.A. That, that's the idea behind uh, getting rid of the uh, electri- electoral college, right? Let's let New York and L.A. Yeah. vote and we all just do what they want. And I don't want to sound insensitive or anything, but this is where Darwinism starts to make sense. This is and, and remember, I'm a creationist and Darwinism is just Marxism. It's all, it's already just trying to take over the world with Marxism and get you to believe an- anti-science complete fiction it's a pagan faith earth worshiping pagan faith where there's no missing link visual to anybody no one's ever seen a missing link we swear there's one and we swear we believe in empiricism it's been demonstrated in a lab there's such a thing as a missing link never been demonstrated this is their faith well it's weird how all these darwinists don't understand and when and when they talk about to christians they always go here i'll prove evolution to you uh uh, viruses evolve mm-hmm. and they, they evolve to resistance to vaccines. Now, why wouldn't they understand and believe in Darwinism all the way that evolution is trying to screen out all of the weak old socialists that live stacked up like rats in New York? I'm telling you, this is Darwinism at work. Dear. That You're trying to be screened out of humanity for your stupidity. And you and you don't get the hint. You're the ones who believe in you. This is your faith. I'm holding you to your religion. Right. <laughs> you should be edited out of the gene pool for being that stupid. I hate to say it, but coronavirus is doing everybody a favor. <laughs> it is. I mean, if evolution is purely true, like if, if it's all there is, yeah. there's so many things that don't make any sense. Like there's no reason to get upset about rape in that point of view. It doesn't make any sense. Like yeah, so why are you sitting here Procreating crying over the dead in New, York, in New York and Detroit? And it tried taking a shot at Hollywood, but the but the Wuhan light bat flu already made its way through that population. A, a small enough percentage of them to have a natural resistance. And even New York, because they're so uh, isolated from China and pr- properly developing a decent human immunity, you know, a herd immunity, they weren't exposed to it, and then their uh, the virus was trying to edit them out. And I'm just saying, if we're going to go evolution, then don't go against my evolution religion now just because it doesn't serve you. It doesn't have a brain. It doesn't have a morality to it. And it's time for you guys to get edited out of the gene pool. Goodbye. <laughs> All right. Keep well, your you head job mask. Your every mask should be screen printed with a hammer and sickle on it. <laughs> I want to make one with a, a bat sticking out of the mouth, the, the kind of yeah. wiggling, wiggling there, little animatronic bat. I want to make one that says uh, "Allahu Akbar" on it because that's the American <laughs> head job. You concede to paganism if you wear one of those masks. Everybody, we should revolt and go to work tomorrow. And I'm even on Sunday, we should yeah. break the Sabbath. Unless no, you I broadcast am. this on Sunday, then then today. Yeah, I think a lot of people are just like, I mean, we're, we're already starting to fall apart. I mean, May 1st, anything beyond May 1st for me is like, I'm going back to every, whatever, you know. But uh, yeah, I got a buddy who owns a cigar shop. And we're just sitting there like we snuck, basically he snuck us in last night and we were in there in the middle of the night. Uh, just like six of us got together, had cigars. It was like the best night ever. 
We've just sitting yeah, there going, why are we How closed many down? of you what? died, Ethan? Yeah. How, how many of you died? I don't know. Well, one of us got crushed by a piano, but uh, they counted that as a, co- a coronavirus death because uh, somebody said that, that uh, he had the sniffles right before it landed on him. Oh, good. Yeah. And all the men should be shaking hands, hugging each other, <laughs> greeting each other with a holy kiss, uh, taking a bite of a of a big che- sloppy cheeseburger going, hey, can I have a bite of that? Sure. Then he takes a bite. You don't wipe it off on your sleeve first, then take the bite. You take the bite to show I'd rather die with you than live with proper distancing. Proper distancing. That's like one of those signs projected in They Live. Observe proper distancing. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> I know it's weird. Like uh, the main one of the main drags where I live, there's these flashing signs, like those those road construction signs, and it just says "Go home." They're just yeah. flashing. It's, yeah, it's it's oh it's, it's freaky. It's so weird. This is stupid. We yeah, we went. We, Trump got we us down to three percent unemployment, and yeah. there were too many black people working. And the left goes, "We must destroy this." We have to voluntarily destroy this. So let's see. We have uh, a bunch of evolutionary scientist eggheads and we have a bunch of Hollywood people, socialists running the media. What can we do? Hmm. (laughs) They get us to 25 percent unemployment in a month voluntarily through psychos saying stay home, quit your voluntarily leave your job. Yeah, it's, yeah it's bonkers because it makes me want. Yeah, it does make me wonder. You know, we've had viruses, we've had other viruses, have never, but this has never happened, and the numbers are ridiculous. Like I was just reading a an article. You know, the numbers are so insanely low; they're lower right now than any a regular flu. And it's like, uh, you know, I they do think this this the political season has been so insane you know everything has been made into a huge outrage this the world is ending that uh and i it does wow. seem like this whole pandemic insanity i can't help but deny that it has something to do with trump being in office and there being a need to just it, even if it's just people it is the, being heightened and like needing to the like more overreact anti trump it's the more anti trump the socialist democrat uh uh, Goldbergian, Jonah Goldbergian, you are the more likely you're on board with stay at home, wear a mask. I'm just saying, I, I see it. I see guys with like the angry avatar that says, you know, that says, uh, stay the F home. All my yeah. art animator friends have that, that yep. angry avatar now. Yeah. Uh, the, the more anti Trump you are, the more likely you're saying comply with the government yeah. and shut it all down. And now all I'm saying is that if America does this voluntarily, we deserve to lose our freedom. We deserve to have a bunch of fake socialist baby killers in charge of everything. We even won an election and we turn it all over to them voluntarily. We deserve it. Seriously, well, fly the hammer and sickle. Let's be done with it. Just try. I, I mean, I the think that there's there's a, an initial thing that's really good that if there is a real viral scare, one thing I love about America is we all really care about each other. You know, to to this, cause to, to, there was to see that kind of unity. Everybody like we're all going to watch out for each other. We're all going to you know we're going to build each other masks and stuff. It's like there's kind of a beautiful thing there, but like uh, initially, and I, I think yeah, it would be weird if if. You know, there is this whole big warning going out that there's this huge virus. Two millions will die, which is what we're being told in the beginning. And uh, and everybody just like, screw you. I got my rights or whatever. And like, uh, and so, but as the numbers have dwindled, <laughs> I also, it also gives me hope to see how pissed off everybody's getting. Like, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it was scary to me. And I, and I do think that in general, more and more people are, are not by the end of this month. I think that uh, this is going to completely turn around. Oh, it's going to backlash at the election. Big time. I'll tell you one thing, Trump, if he has a pair of balls, he better quit with all this redistribution of trillions of dollars. First of all, he did give everyone a check and he stole the glory for it by signing his name to it. (laughs) They all have a little Donald Trump on them. So everyone getting their welfare check goes like, I got I got my Obama phone from Trump. 
<laughs> I never got an Obama phone from Obama. So first of all, he stole their glory. But if he doesn't start bucking the scientists and say, this is all fake news, go back to work and create an American civil war. He, he should say, everybody, uh, exercise your Second Amendment right, pack your heat and go to work <laughs> tomorrow. And, and then have all the media and all the left freak out on them and say, no, we can't. Do it. And you, I swear, Ethan, you watch six months from now, the Democrats will still be wearing masks and be going, I'm staying <laughs> yeah, home and doing pro- <laughs> even, proper distance. Even though all the rubes are going back to work, it's going to become virtue signaling now. It's going to be a new divide in America. Who stays home and who goes and works for their money? Yeah, well, we got an email from a guy in Sweden who said over there, and he's a fan um uh, I don't know his name handy here, but he uh, he said that they, you know their general rule has just been no gatherings of fifty or more. But other than that, most most everybody's keeping just you know business as usual, and they're they're not dying off any faster than anybody. In fact, I think they're one of the better countries. So I mean, it, it's insane the the places that are being more lax about this. The test would be that the deaths would skyrocket in those areas, and that's not happening. Well, they canceled yeah. Comic Con, Ethan. So Can you even think of amount so of we, money people have lost family, that, like people that investments and oh, oh it's insane, hundreds of it's, millions. Uh, oh. And and we're still the Tenapel family is still flying down to San Diego for our last two weeks in July. So now we don't have a Comic Con where we have to see a bunch of blue haired furries all dressed up with their giant boobs sticking out. Instead, we'll have all of the manly men get together. We'll have cigars and we'll have our own little Comic-Con. And I want as many people as possible to come. Yeah, let's do it. We got to do Can some we do that? in person. We're going to have I want to I want an unsafe amount of people. So it's illegal in California. Yeah, let's do it. We got to record some audio mullets. I want hundreds. We'll get beer. We'll have cigars. We'll meet in public. And I want to be the first person to go to jail. <laughs> All right. Because if Gavin, New- I want to say, I want to talk to Gavin Newsom. I want that perfectly quashed, effeminate metrosexual. I want him to come to my prison. I will grab his head and I will stick my thumbs in his eyes. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I'll say, I just did you a favor. I just, I just now, I'm just making reality line up to your moral center. You're blind. And now I'm going to make you physically blind. It'd be hard to do because he's really looks really slippery. His head would slip all around in your grasp because his hair is full of gel. Like he uses a ton of that stuff. Yeah, it's like it's it's like catching yeah, like a you'd grease squeeze pig and he just fair. pop out and go flying across the room. Hold still, and then I'd see up close his horizontal uh, eye, eyelids, inner eyelids that a lizard has, clo- blinking and closing. I'd see that little that <laughs> vertical black line, that single vertical black line in a snake. Yeah. No, he seems to be enjoying this a little too much. It freaks me out. What is the... No, they're in... Dude, they're on fire, man. The left, they, they have like the biggest Marxist boner right now. I'm surprised they don't, they won't... They're going to probably roll out mandatory gay marriage. I think they're going to make it so that only man on... Only same sex and lesbians don't count. So they never are into like female same sex. It will only make... There will only be one form of marriage recognized and that's two men. But none of them would say like I like this. Like this is great. Uh, and right? one like, of them has to be I, I one of them has head. to be I know what is it? One of them has to be like what is it that they like about this? Like why would anybody want this? They 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 think they're going to pin it on Trump. So you I think swear. that's it. They, they think, think they hate business. They hate freedom. They hate American freedom. They hate the idea that you can Go and work that normal people can work and make a living without a government making everyone feel mm-hmm. helpless and welfarey. So, so yeah, it's, uh, but it's it, it's not going to work. You can already see it's going to turn back on them. It's going to snap back on them so hard. Americans mm-hmm. are going to go back to work. We will have a lot of work to do on the recovery end because you can't just rebuild a job yeah. and create it from nothing. You got to. It's going to take so, time, but we're tough so and we'll it, do like it. it. It's shattering. Uh, it, it shatters the illusion of that in their mind, it's shattering the illusion of capitalism, right? Like, ah, see capitalism's come to bite you back because you thought you could just have a free market and liberty. And now you're paying the price and you're having to get bailed out by the government. And they yeah. love the idea that everybody's like desperate for the government to like take care of them. So it's not that they like the situation, but they like yeah, what they it's like doing the to, in their mind. They think everybody's 
going to change because of it and go, oh, wait, we needed the more government all along and all this capitalism just ruined everything. The, the, the Grinch on the top of that hill looking looking down on America going, and, and when they see all their jobs are gone, they'll go boo, hoo, hoo. And then from, from the dust, they hear the Americans going back to, back to work, mm-hmm. armed, throwing their, their hijabs, their hijab mask. I like my meat plaque meat packing plant job <laughs> and we'll we'll all go back to work and the mighty engine will roar again and the the spice will flow yeah i see it i see this bouncing back i don't see any other any other outcome in, in our country i think that <laughs> at least i hope that's my hope well uh well we got to win some more down ticket we got to get some more down ticket uh wins out of this hopefully we can and, any of the socialist government. Oh, yeah, Michigan. By the way, even on the right, even all the Republicans are a little little yeah. too compliant, a little too quick. I didn't vote. I didn't vote for any of this garbage to say what products you I can buy and yeah. not buy at Walmart or Home Depot. How dare you? Throw them out. Yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping there's going to be a, 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 road, a corner turned here. I, I feel it. You can just feel it in like the way people are getting sick of this. But uh, for it's been, it's kind of lived out its couple of weeks or, you know, I guess a month at this point of being kind of the virtue signal thing. And everybody can, you know, everybody's, you know, you look, you look like a real jerk if you're keeping your store open or whatever. But I, uh, I really hope those days are, are coming to a close here. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling Trump right now, get, get, talk about get, get ahead of the curve and flatten the curve. Trump, you better come mm-hmm. out quick on this or I will turn it against you and I will destroy <laughs> you your presidency. Will I will get you voted out. <laughs> Audio mullet. We all, all start an anti-Trump movement so fast, dude. I will throw he you out it. on the air. You better, the, without vision, without mm-hmm. vision, the people will perish. Yeah. Get in front of this, dude. If you're for business and you're a true businessman, we need leadership. Well, there's places that are already starting to open up parks and, uh, and things like that. So there's already people opening things back up. From what I've read, I think I think we're going to see a rapid return in the next couple of weeks. That's my prediction. I want the but Ethan, I want I the agree. church to yeah. lead it. The church should say, "Forget you, government." Where's Where's the separation of church and state people now? You always every time the church opens their mouth, you always get slapped back <laughs> by some Stalinist saying separation of church and state, and then they pass a basically pass a law where you can't congregate we should be tomorrow we should be back in church and the church should lead it going hey government right here forget you we're we're gonna worship and we're gonna all meet together in <laughs> up with unsafe spacing i'm down and what are you gonna do about it pass a law i, mean, against I was the actually church? thinking about this you know because we me you and mike all live in different places but i wonder if we did have like a mullet get yeah. together of some kind. Yeah. Yeah. The flights but I'm even are cheap. Saying like, They're like 75 I could have bucks. One out we could all meet California, in California, you could have one out there. And you know, tell all the fans. Want to meet up for a cigar. Our audience is small enough that, who you know, it'd be a few people at tops probably. <laughs> yeah. M- mullet tour. No, I okay. want a da- I want dangerous amounts. I want at least a hundred people. You know that would be event. cool. Make it like the mullet retreat Stay together. Do like every year we do like the mullet retreat. If you if you fist fly bump, out to, yeah. If you do, if we catch you doing a fist bump, we will go tw- Deuteronomy twenty five eleven and twelve on your butt. We will cut your hand <laughs> off. There will be handshakes, hearty hugs, no <laughs> fist bumps. Invented by Obama and Michelle. Uh, Barack and Michelle would fist bump. Now I go to the church. Hey, and I'm allowing everybody a few weeks of, of being scared and careful. How dare you, sir? So, but I am, I'm beginning to hope that we all kind of shift off that, but okay. <laughs> I'm here to free you. The truth will set you free. I'm Thank here to you. pry your Thank eyes open, remove the sleeps from your eye. Like a, like a Paul on the Damascus road. I'm going to knock you off your camel and you'll, I'll baptize you and you'll teleport and wake up and find yourself in some other place. You'll go, and I appeared somewhere else. You'll open your eyes up and go, holy cow, we've been lied to. And only the audio mullet, only Doug Tenaple months ago yeah. told me this whole flu, yeah. this 
fake light flu. Man, the thing that if another virus comes along, like half of half, you know, they really blew it on this one, I think, because uh, at least half of America next time they try to pull this off, be like, screw you, I'm not doing this again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, they'll be like, no, this is Y2K 2201K. <laughs> we swear, b- buy your boxes of seeds yeah. and uh, hole up in your, because we swear Can't this time. It, Michigan. Can't even legally buy seeds. Uh, Jiminy Cripes, yeah, what have we come to? This isn't America. We're soft. We deserve to lose it. Just It might be good, though. Everyone's getting a taste of like, you know big government social you know the kind of the uh being i don't know i just feel like you're getting a taste of something here that we know we don't want and hopefully it'll yeah, turn well, around two paths it'll either be once bitten twice shy where we'll go okay never again or this is a kind of vaccine where they yeah. implant a little bit of social in as a rollout program like the frog being boiled in water and we've been desensitized to it and we'll be a little more compliant. Next yeah, that time. is what scares me. Though yeah. so I've never been more willing to engage in some kind of civil disobedience like in my yeah, life. Yeah. So, I mean, this is like, yeah, I never even had that thought before. Like, I, had to go out, I would be willing to go out somewhere and potentially get arrested or whatever. That's the man in you. It's getting ridiculous. Comic Con. We're going to rebel. Comic Con's canceled. We're going to have our own Comic Con in San oh, yeah, Diego. Yeah, I guess that, that could be the thing. Mullet Con. This, let's come up with like a uh, a meeting spot in San Diego. Well, yeah, we'll go to a cigar joint and hodads. We'll do a little tour. Hodads. We'll eat because I will eat myself nearly to death for you guys. <laughs> and I mean eating carbs. We'll force Mike to eat carbs. We'll get burgers and fries and make them. Well, okay. I'll make them. Okay. We'll make them. Uh, I don't know you can and make them do stuff. So we'll have a big, big fat burger, make him eat dessert and a Coke, mm-hmm. a sweet Coke. And just he'll probably shut down in a All coma. Right. And then we'll go to have cigars and then we'll go get drunk at a bar together and we will meet in public and smoke our cigars out on the streets, not in a lounge, on the streets in civil disobedience. We'll blow our smoke around and there'll be no one around for miles because all the lefties will still be wearing their masks. Yeah. 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 And bring guns. Punching random people in the face and running over cats. (laughs) Bring guns. I want to see. I'm going to put a bump stock on a 22 pistol. Just for the fun of it. <laughs> and then we'll read the scriptures out, yeah, all oh, yeah. the offensive scriptures offensive out loud. Ones. No man comes to the Father but mm. through me. It's going to be great. <laughs> all right. Uh, I might make it. I don't know. I'm, I'm, uh, I got to check the calendar. <laughs> you want to propose uh, a, it's a new morning, there's a new order. I propose a new order. Okay. <laughs> You're getting all the conspiracy theorists' heart, hearts pumping. Yeah. Order order 69. And this is order 70. Execute order. Execute order 70. So, uh, you want to answer some emails? Yeah. Okay. Okay, I have, I've got, um, I've categorized, so I'll give you, I'll give you some categories. We have questions on music. Uh, we have a Hollywood-ish question, uh, creationism, and aliens. All of it. Go quick. <laughs> okay. All right. So music. We had an audio question from a guy named Aaron. It was a bit long. And then a girl named Lindsay emailed. And, and girls always get priority. And she was very concise. And I think it's pretty similar to Aaron's question. Um how can a girl be more concise than a man? <laughs> I mean, Usually they're the ones chatting you up. I think she was trying to write. Girl. She was trying to speak our language. Because listen, this is great. It says, or this is from Lindsay. In accordance of the rules of email as stated by Ethan in last week's episode. One, <laughs> I am a female fan. So that brings the tally up to what? Six of us. That's it also fine. makes me eminently qualified to serve as the Democrat Party's vice president. I've heard that the only necessary qualification, correct? <laughs> Fact. So yeah, she's a, she's a woman, so she can be vice president. Uh, two, I will refrain from mentioning how important to my childhood any of your work was. Neverhood did and still does give me nightmares. That already makes you better than half the men who've written in. <laughs> and three, can you kindly treat us to your innermost feelings on contemporary music services? And that's it. 
And I think Aaron was more curious about what we like and don't like in Christian music. So just kind of combine those two. Sure. Well, I, I have a feeling I like the contemporary Christian music more than you do. Right. So uh, you probably do. I'm usually, and it could be because I'm, I'm pretty angry and rebellious outside of the church. But when I go in, I submit myself to that culture and try not to judge it too much. As long mm -hmm. as it's scriptural, I don't, I just don't, I don't care. So I'm more worried about the church, say, having a passive view on the scriptures or something mm -hmm. that sets me on fire. But if you choose to do culturally bland or whatever music to get people emotionally involved with something and it, and that emotion works on me, then I'm OK with that. I don't turn it into objective moral truth or anything, but I'm on board with just to me. It's just like happy and we're singing together and mm -hmm. I'm OK with that. So I I recognize that like the early church was probably just singing the Psalms you know, raw in like a, some Gregorian chant or some Eastern mysticism chant where they, uh, you know, it was probably one note or something yeah. <laughs> <Just> to, <laughs> over and over. I'd be okay with that if we roll, I'd roll with that too. Mm -hmm. But if they want to do uh, kind of rip off bar songs or three chord Beatles or feel good seventies music and throw some Christian lyrics in there, then I'm okay with it. And usually I enjoy it pretty much. There's a couple of songs that are dogs if they don't have a good hook, like either a well-written music or a well-written emotional sting or a lyric that really twists and makes you feel, uh, you know, like, wow, that was a real, uh, that really agrees with me. Do you ever feel um, like any of the lyrics are just like really stupid? Yes. <laughs> okay. Just, well, keep, our church just doesn't, making sure. <laughs> <laughs> but our church doesn't sing, tend to sing those stupid ones. Okay. That are like, I, I just really feel like this is where I need to be. And whatever <laughs> I feel about God and gay marriage is probably right. Like <laughs> those songs. Oh, yeah. That, we don't that sing. Old, that, old that old chestnut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm. And, you know, music is an emotional form of art. Mm -hmm. So it, it really is supposed to make you um, emote and feel something. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I've, I mean, we've talked about this some already. I'm not, I'm generally, it's not a moral judgment for me. It is more of, more of taste generally for me. So, and I just try not to impose my taste on everybody else. So, I mean, I, I'm not going to leave a church over its music. You know, I just yeah, I, but like, like if they set the Psalms to an insane clown posse song, <laughs> would you, I would you sing that? I, I probably wouldn't. No, there are songs I don't sing just cause it, it, it's just like, okay. Like one of the ones, some of the ones that drive me the craziest are during the Christmas season and they'll take these great, you know, like, uh, Oh, come all ye faithful or something. Um, these great old Christmas songs. And then they add this, like, new bridge or chorus to it that's all like super high and passionate yeah and it drives me crazy like it's just like this isn't the song why are you adding that you think you fixed one of the greatest songs ever written and i just that annoys me so much i stand there i just wait i don't sing that part it's just it's, i find it you so shut noxious. out the holy spirit you cross your arms no but i look holy around spirit. the room and i see like like 90 percent of everyone in the audience isn't singing either they're just like what is this why are you adding this to the song oh okay I don't know. That's should a, just, but that's should, just a pet peeve. Should a worship leader, though, should they be doing what the audience wants or give them what they think they need? I mean, isn't that their ministry job is to give them what they need versus what they want? You think that's what they need? They need a new. Yeah. Well, like that's what I uh, enjoy to the world. Have you heard that? They like add that part to joy to the world. Joy to the world. That yeah. one. Yeah, but then they add that part later on. It's like joy, so much joy, an overcoming flood of joy so all over me. World. No, it's like yeah, it just goes on. <laughs> joy is just gushing on me like a flood, and I'm drowning in joy, and it's, I'm just can't breathe. And uh, somebody call an ambulance. Like that's like 
literally the part because like it wasn't I like enough. that one song that kind of admits that we're mediocre it's like you know though we try hard with our songs and everything we make is garbage though i've effed everything up <laughs> you're the one who fixes everything i kind of like that one when i don't know more. that one <laughs> There's there's some worship song about <laughs> though I f it up <laughs> you your you grace fixes attention? fixes yeah I'm not really I don't really listen to the lyrics I just like mm. the beat you just like the beat yeah <laughs> so they could be they could be singing like Gwar and you'd be like oh this yeah. is great. you'd be worshiping well I you sh- love Gwar they, if they wore armor if they wore cardboard armor <laughs> under the Lord that would yeah. be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I do think a lot of it is just from being a, a musician and being in a band of seeing how the sausage is made and how there's just certain tricks to manipulating an audience and getting them energized that yeah. I just kind of see it as like, it's a concert. Like it's a powerful thing, but it's kind of a way of like, it's a dependable way of making. And who knows, you know, God created music. So in some sense, in some ways, like that energy is from God. It's like, you know, it's his creation. So there's something transcendent to it. Uh, but yeah. It, and the pastor is doing the same thing and the congregation is yeah. doing the same thing. The pastor is a great public speaker. And we all yeah. know a, a, a man who can speak the truth, but is a terrible public speaker. And then we all know of a great public speaker, emotional, like Joel Osteen. Mm-hmm. And he just spews whatever. Uh, and it's great when the two come together. So the point is that the music, it's not that the music shouldn't have a hook or be or emotionally manipulated audience. It's that there ought to be a truth somewhere rolling yeah. around in there that's good for us. Yeah, it's not that it's bad to have a hook or be, it's just, it, it, yeah, I guess that's it. The more manufactured feeling things are throughout a church service, the less I'm there for it. You know, if everything's polished, you got your laser lights and every single song is, you know, they're hitting every high note and harmony and like the pastors, this is amazing public speaker. That's, you know, just hitting every note. And it just feels like, uh, it feels like Barnum and Bailey's circus, you know, like every single yeah. step is figured out. Multiple camera, cue the B camera yeah. up close. Then it's just a slow show. Pu- slow push in at the end of the message, yeah. slow push. In. And I didn't come into, ch- I didn't come to church for a show. And that, that is why I loved, and I don't even know if they're conger, if they're, uh, whether any if they have any issues theologically but i used to go to the church of christ in uh oregon city because they just sing out of a hymnal acapella yeah, yeah. church of christ they but they don't believe in uh instruments some yeah. of them i think they're so wrong they about amazing, that but i love it i love amazing harmonies yeah no mics they just all sing out of a, hymnals and like it sounds so great we're not focusing on some guy up there with his you know cool hairdo or whatever like it's just the church is singing together. It's like, man, I love you did that. Get I love the way musician more. in the Church of Christ, which is the most obnoxious member of any church. You <laughs> got rid of all the musicians. Well, kind of. It's like it, they're you still never there. heard of an art. Never There's, heard of an art ministry either yeah. in a church of Christ. Yeah. So they got rid of all the fine artists too. And there's no dance ministry. Oh, well, the thing is, I, most musicians that go to church. There's two kinds. This is why they're obnoxious because you know the moment you. Go, it's it's like being a. A uh, insanely attractive woman and walking to Comic Con. If you're a musician, you walk into church and you know that I, all eyes are on you. If you look like a musician, they're going, oh, "We got to get this guy on the stage. Got to get him playing guitar every single Sunday morning." So if he's, especially if he's like attractive and cool looking, yeah. So musicians that don't want to be playing music every Sunday morning and being compl- like used for their t- abilities on the stage constantly will dress in normal garb. They'll go in incognito to church. Cause they don't want it. Cause they're, they're trying not to get noticed. So yeah, probably remember, church of Christ. There's uh, I used all to go sorts to a of church with the bass player from social distortion, John Maurer. And he would, he would just dress normal and sit in the congregation. He didn't go up and play in the band cause he was in a real band. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of, it's, you know, it'd be like if they're like, Hey Doug, why don't you come and draw comics every Sunday morning on the stage? Ugh, that would ruin, <laughs> that would ruin church. <laughs> I know. I'm going to start the draw ministry. It's my gift. It's a gift. (laughs) All men, you know, we're all blessed with something. Some men have prophecy. That is, they predict the future and predict God's doom. And they're the mouthpiece of God. And some of us go on stage and draw comics. (laughs) (laughs) And I guess that's the other thing is, there's a lot. And, you know, I was there. I was a worship leader. So I was um, there. Uh, you know, a lot of young worship leaders, they're just excited to be in front of an audience playing music 
And to them, it's kind of a replacement for being in a rock band or on a stage. And uh, I think it takes a certain level of maturity for a worship leader to be kind of like, this isn't about me at all. This is about uh, the congregation singing together. And uh, it's hard to find that. I think it's hard to find worship leaders that are in that place because a lot of worship leaders are pretty young and their music is their whole life. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll take a guy that's in it for the wrong reason. So long, yeah, he's yeah. Do, so long as he's singing the right thing. Yeah, I think Garber, I'd ra- I I like have, seeing a good show. Yeah. It, and if it's full of I think truth, you're more into that than I am. But yeah, I, I, but I get it. Because we, if I go to a great rock band or if you go to a great bluegrass thing, you'll sit there and, and applaud. Mm-hmm. And then you won't applaud in church if some guy pulls off a well, great. Well, yeah, if the music's good, you know, but it's not like I didn't go for that, you know. The different. I don't know. Yeah, you're above it all. In church. You're above it all, yeah. <laughs> 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 what about uh, oh. what are some Christian bands you like and some that you don't like? The, well, the the ones that I don't like probably I haven't even heard of. So the uh, <laughs> the ones I do like, I love all the old ones from when I was in high school. The ones that were very important to shaping my faith. Mm-hmm. So one of them is Steve Taylor, who's kind of this new wave, Bowie, funny. Theologic, theologically uh, amazing and way ahead of his time on liberalism, like shredding it. Um, Steve Taylor. And then the other one is D- Daniel Amos or Terry Taylor. So they're the two Taylors in my life. Terry Taylor, who did music for us all the time. He was in a band called Daniel Amos. That, mm-hmm. And they did not They did everything from new wave to grunge rock. And they just had fun. They, were, they did country. And they were just... Uh, but it's because of the lyrical content. The music was hooky, mm-hmm. full of hook. And then the lyrics really taught me a lot. Uh, mm. Gave me a lot of my kind of take on life of creativity and and really seeking the one true God. I just And Larry Norman was big. Randy Stonehill was big. Bob Dylan's Christian albums were big to me. And then... Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I did look, I did buy the Kanye album last year. That's something recent. And mm. uh, the one song, I think it's called Sella. It's the, one of the first two songs on it mm-hmm. where he starts quoting scripture. I really enjoyed it. Mm. I jogged to it. I liked it. I go, oh, yeah, Kanye, you. that's a hooky, oh, yeah. hooky little piece of hip-hop garbage. I like it. <laughs> you my Chick-fil-A. You my Chick Fil A. All I can world. think of is how like of how beautiful Kim Kardashian is. This girl who became famous for basically making a porno tape. <laughs> Just going, oh man, this yeah. is the church, man. <laughs> um, for me, I mean, I have the ones that I don't listen to a lot of them anymore, but there were definitely bands that had a huge impact on me. Five Iron Frenzy, um. <laughs> Craig's brother, who's kind of like a quasi atheist Christian band, <laughs> but a lot of old tooth and nail bands. I was very influenced by those kind of the underground Christian music. Um, yeah. MXPX. They didn't no, even sing lyrics and they were Christian. I don't to MXPX. They're, yeah. They're like kind of the mainstream of tooth and nail. I never got into them, but uh, stre- there's a band called Stretch Armstrong. <laughs> they're like metal. Uh, trying to think. Pedro the Lion, who renounced his faith. There you go. Some he of his did a songs were very. Yeah, he did a written link. Yeah, some of his uh, songs really uh, touched me a lot. I, I still sing them. Um, but he decided uh, there's no Jesus, just God, or something like that. Or he doesn't believe in Christian. He left Christianity. Um, He's allowed. Yeah. Don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. <laughs> I think that's what made me um, gravitate towards bluegrass was there's a, there's, it's just accepted to be Christian in that culture. You, there's no sure. division. So it's not like I'm there's a Christian no bluegrass band. There's no weight to it. Yeah. So there's no, yeah. You don't have to wear the little arm patch to show that you're Christian or whatever. <laughs> it's just everybody is or isn't or they're a mix or whatever. It's just accepted to be or not be. And so and your uh, hero, Ricky Skaggs, he's pretty outspoken. Oh yeah. Faith, very outspoken. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He has some really good songs. So I think that's one reason I kind of gravitated towards it. Cause I, I got sick of that divide. Like 
uh, within rock and stuff. And it was, the division was really big in like the early 2000s, late 90s. It was, you know, massive. I don't know if it's quite as, it's changed now to where Christian music, like I don't think that Christian bands are doing the Christian version of this and the Christian version of that anymore. That was like kind of a movement for a while. Now it seems it's mostly the worshipy CCM bands that are doing the, the all the songs that are becoming the the new the new hot worship song in church. Then you got guys like you know Hillsong, just all these people like basically being socialist now. <laughs> so and and Christians are so dumb. They're like, okay, <laughs> I you know it's weird. Is I think the farther the more socially liberal your art form is the bigger deal it is to come out as Christian Mm -hmm. because uh, bluegrass that's like right wing that's redneck. (laughs) So, so it's okay to be a Democrat or a Republican or a Christian or an atheist in that because Mm -hmm. it's, it's more, it's more about the art form itself. But then as soon as you get into a certain music style or like if you're in the fine arts and not just like the practical arts, if you're in the, fine art then mm-hmm. suddenly being a christian fine artist is a big thing yeah well, who yeah i can't do that christian pop star christian actor yeah is a big thing yeah yeah it's almost branding it's, it makes that's what makes it stand he's out he's a he's a scientist who's a creationist and suddenly it's news mm-hmm. because he's a you know he's that mm-hmm. yeah well oh you know what there is an artist named Kelly Joe Phelps. And I don't know if a lot of you guys have heard of him, but he plays amazing finger picking slide guitar. Oh yeah. He's in the Phelps family. I love those guys. <laughs> Fred Phelps. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, he actually, was yeah, just he's playing. from Portland and I don't know. We had a bit of a drop out there. Uh, yeah. The last six hours of show we just did got cut off. Yeah. We just, we were talking and my computer jiggled and uh, it, it stopped working. So it was terrible. So I'll just, I'll just, I, I, I just spent the whole time talking about Kelly Joe Phelps, which is a super obscure artist nobody knows about. So then he, con, then he I'll confessed up his by deepest, saying, darkest sin in thought, word, or deed. And then that. <laughs> if you like, if you like really good guitar playing, Kelly Joe Phelps. Okay. Slide guitar, finger pick. Okay. Sure. Right. So. Well, we don't have uh, time for the other question. Well, Shouldn't we wrap? Aren't we done yet? No. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're pretty far in. Um, so, yeah. Sad Mike couldn't make it. But, Mike, uh, come back to us. Press on. What could he be doing today? What do you think he could be doing? Hopefully participating in some kind of a protest march. They're doing <laughs> yeah, a big protest here in Nashville, those, which I wish I'd which I wish they? I could have gone. Yeah, I should have gone there. Because that's that's always going to be a hoot in Nashville, man. Yeah. Yeah, like in Michigan, they have the big car like drive in protest. Everyone's in their cars. Honking. Why don't they? But they should get Surrounding out of the their capital. cars and socialize with each other. Some did, yeah. Some, yeah. But the state is trying to like, keep well, you from touching another human being. Just think <laughs> about it, America. Don't be stupid. Think about it. Mm-hmm. Think about these people. <laughs> go back to work. So, uh, go, ba- go back to work. Yep. Lose the mask. Uh, and grow a pair of balls. Show a little confidence. Show that America, there's a beating heart left in this country. Or concede your country and turn it over to the Caesar. You should. And if you're walking down the street and you see somebody else, you should kick them in the balls. You should tackle them and just love on them. (laughs) Tackle them. (laughs) I'm trying to take everything to like extreme so that we're on the same wavelength. Yeah. If someone tells you be subtle. Go extreme. Not good. Automatic. You say, no, yeah. you're not in charge of me. Yeah. And then bite their face. Yeah. I'll rub myself on you like butter it. on toast. And I don't care if you're an ugly man. <laughs> <laughs> that's comforting. And if you, if you're offended and you punch me, that's good too. <laughs> this has been audio mullet. Gonna do the one, two, three, clap on four. Yeah. Yep. Twice. Yep. Okay.
I'll go first. Ready? Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> that was that wasn't on a beat. That was like one, two, three. Maybe a little faster. You know, like a lot of space. Unless it's skipping. That was really weird. Clap on four. Yeah. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, I thought you were going to do it. Did you do it with me? Yeah, I did it with you. Okay. <laughs> man, it's really delayed on my end. <laughs> it is. All right. That was crazy. Like I clapped and I just stared at you for like three seconds and then you clapped. <laughs> yeah, I think we're about three <laughs> seconds off. Like it was pretty late on mine too. Yeah. I'm going to. I'm going to turn my video off just to try to save some bandwidth. Save some life. There we go. Okay. Okay. I can't. I don't look at you when I'm recording anyway. So. Yeah. Uh, who's singing a sin? Me? My turn? Yeah. Orient me on where we are and what we're doing. Oh man, that's really bad. What? Oh man, this is really bad. Why is that? Okay. When you talk, it's like he's like, and then all of a sudden, you're like, <laughs> like you catch up. <laughs> oh man, you know what I mean? Like it slows down and speeds up because it's trying to stay with it. Why? We're just gonna make the best of it. Yeah. Just give each other time to pause. Just take a pause. That's all. I mean, it's already paused, so I answer fast. Okay. I, I I make I try to make sure that my audio mullet time doesn't interfere with the family at all, so it doesn't become any kind of an issue. Otherwise, it could be. I could not be doing it. I have to just kind of like even right now. I just kind of I frame it as I want to. I want a phone call with Doug. So, yes, I, keep it, I have to keep it purely in the hobby category so that uh, it doesn't ever infringe. It's even below the hobby ca- category. Yeah. We're so I we're I, I put it the below mercy of your son's appetite for Fortnite. If I did right. anything that was at the mercy of my kid's appetite for Fortnite, <laughs> it would just be <laughs> automatic nothing. It's more well. It's the thing is because he's he's on with all his buddies right now. Like they're all you know having like a blast together. Oh, heaven forbid, so. break into a bunch of, what is it? That's a, that's like, that's a smile on a dog, Ethan, as <laughs> Edie Burkell oh, sings. It's a smile. <sighs> Plumbing meaning, but my kids, they're having a meaning. Now it would be different if they were doing something. It really, no, it really, okay. It's not that. It's, I would happily disappoint my children. It will, the, the, the friction it would cause with my wife. Yeah, Ethan doesn't want. That's wanna, really the uh, issue. That's he doesn't want to interrupt the Council of Trent over there. <laughs> Importance. The United Nations are meeting. Because if, if I'm coming in and, and ruining everybody's day in the house, and then I walk back out here and hide and do my my podcast, once the podcast is over, I'm going to walk back into a very bad place. Now I know, Doug, you you just have a boldness about you where you would walk in and do that and be fine. I'm not. I, I can't do that. I live in a bad place. It's perpetual. <laughs> Is that why you're in your office so much?